Good afternoon, everyone. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder with the National Weather Service. It's the 20th of June, and as always, we encourage you to stay up to date with your local weather information. Uh, you can do that easily by calling 1-800-472-0391. That's our Alaska weather information line. You can always find us online at weather.gov slash Alaska, or if you can't find what you're looking for, email me anytime, david.snyder at noaa.gov. I'm privileged to serve you any way I can. If that means helping you find information that helps to keep you safe and informed with your Alaska weather or river forecast information or tsunami warning information, I'm privileged to be able to do that. So please do let me know and why don't you send me a picture of where you're looking out at your Alaska village today. I'd love to see what things look like in your part of Alaska. Should be pretty bright. Uh, as we go forward in the next 12 hours or so, we are moving quickly into summer solstice territory. Solstice, of course, is tomorrow, Friday, the June 21st. And uh, the actual moment of that astronomical occurrence is 7.54 Alaska time. Uh, you'll recall that uh, summer solstice means that that uh, sun's apparent track is at its northernmost point in the entire year. And that means Alaska, of course, is getting more daylight than any other part of the lower 48. You can go and brag to all of your friends and neighbors. As we go back into the fall, we'll head back toward the vernal equinox, and that's where we have about the same amount of daylight as the lower 48. And then, of course, the, the lower end of that entire pattern is the winter solstice when the sun angle is coming in uh, very low in the sky, if at all, if you're north of the Arctic Circle, of course. And Alaska will have less daylight than the lower 48. As we've been progressing through the early summer weeks there, that sun angle is getting higher and higher and higher. And for many of you, of course, as you well know, it looks like the sun's kind of doing a loop up there in the sky there. It's not a perfect 90 degree uh, point of that sun coming in, but it's pretty high up there. And it's one reason that uh, those temperatures can feel like uh, when they're in the 60s and 70s that they are scorching hot across Alaska because there's just very little way to get into the shade there, as we well know. So enjoy your summer solstice. Happy summer. And uh, again, the astronomical beginning of summer starts tomorrow at 7.54 Alaska time. And of course, when this time of the year reaches us every year, we start to watch for fire danger. And uh, the updated map today shows widespread high fire danger up and down the Yukon Valley into the Norton Sound, Seward Peninsula, and the Kotzebue Sound region, and into the Kobuk Noatak Valley area and the upper Tanana Valley, as well as the Copper River Valley, the Matanuska and the Susitna Valleys all the way down to the western end of the Kenai. That's a lot going on there. Extreme fire danger, a much higher fire danger in the upper Yukon, also across the upper Koyukuk into the Kobuk and Noatak Valleys, and we're also seeing some areas around the Seward Peninsula uh, that are experiencing that as well. Two areas of uh, pretty active fire. There's uh, several fires across uh, the entirety of Alaska, but two that are, are getting a little bit more attention maybe three actually, the Swan Lake Fire down around the uh, western Kenai Peninsula there around uh, the Sterling Highway region. A lot of smoke's been blowing into the south central and Cook Inlet region there. Smells like wildfire where you are. That's probably what it is if you're in south central. That smoke will not really get a good flushing out in one direction or the other for several days. So it's going to linger around, making for beautiful sunsets, but uh, probably not uh, the kind of air that you really want to be breathing in. Uh, if you want to check on the air quality, a good way to do that is go to the State of Alaska's Division of Air Quality page as part of the DEC, and uh, they are monitoring air quality in several places around the state, including uh, in the vicinity of uh, Anchorage and certainly in South Central. Up around Nome and the Seward Peninsula, uh, wildfires are continuing in that area, and the Caribou Hills fire there in the interior is also ongoing. So uh, be careful with fires you're heading out and about this weekend. It's a great weekend to catch some fish, but always a good time to be very careful with fire when you're outside. Make sure you check in with your local wildfire managers and uh, make sure that it is okay to burn if you're doing any burning and trash removal out in your location. Let's take a look at the drought monitor now. Uh, this is the latest as of today for southeast. You can see we're still sitting in extreme drought for southern parts of southeast, all the way from uh, just about Petersburg down toward Heidelberg, Ketchikan, Craig, Klawak, all generally in that area. Uh, we're talking about very dry conditions. Now, it has been raining. That's been good. And uh, there is moisture that has been falling. But again, it's that correlation with how much should we have this time of the year as we compare that to the average over 30 years and how much have we had this year or in the last 365 days or for the last couple of years. And because of that lack of moisture falling across southern parts of southeast, uh, again, that extreme drought continues there. Um, we look up northward and you can see that abnormally dry conditions are found from Juneau to Haines, Skagway, Yakutat, and now up the eastern border of Alaska. So that drier weather is continuing and worsening for some areas from McCarthy to just east of Glen Allen to Toke and Eagle and Northway, all included in that as well. 
So is there signs of hope for a little more rainfall in southeast especially? Well, probably not so much today. Drier conditions have been found up and down southeast. You can see that patch of dry air sitting across your region. It's been a beautiful day today. Probably have another beautiful day tomorrow. High pressure uh, trying to give way to low pressure moving across the western Gulf, and that's bringing in some clouds to places like Kodiak. Certainly a lot of fog there. There is a decent high pressure system across the southern Bering Sea. Areas of fog stretch all the way up into the Bering Sea with that. And you can see that uh, holding up around St. Lawrence Island there, a lot of low murky clouds sitting around St. Matthew as well. A large chunk of the western interior has been uh, looking at VFR conditions most of the day, clouds bubbling up in the daytime heating, and uh, certainly a beautiful swath of dry weather across the north slope into the Arctic Village region and out around the Beaufort Sea coast there. But clouds are lingering and so is the ice. You can see some of the ice sitting right here in the visible satellite picture. Watch as some of that kind of moves around just a little bit there. Again, uh, looking at generally dry conditions, but a cold front is dropping southward out of the Chukchi and eventually into the North Slope as we go ahead into the weekend. We're probably going to see some changes as that cooler air moves across the Brooks Range. Out ahead of that, wouldn't be surprised to see shower and thunderstorm activity uh, pop up a little bit more as we get into Saturday and your Sunday as that is advancing southward, but it does not look like it is going to be a, a large swath of cold air moving through any one part of South Central or Southwestern Alaska probably won't last that long. One more look at the visible satellite picture here. You can see that uh, wet air is kind of sloshing up across South Central. Uh, the overall trend though is for dry weather across many locations in the interior. We are going to be looking at some showers with the daytime heating of course across the Alaska Range and into the interior. High pressure right now sitting up across the northwestern parts of the Brooks Range and some areas of smoke around the Seward Peninsula and Kenai Peninsula of course and the vicinity of those fires and certainly even spreading out even more from that as we get into uh, South Central. A 1,011 millibar low there is dragging in some of that warmer air gradually into the Gulf. We've got dry weather over Southeast, generally dry weather across Southwest. One interesting thing there, I did notice out across the Yukon Delta, a little surge of uh, some heavier rainfall was working through earlier this afternoon. Very concentrated area, but uh, it does look like a lot of that will kind of spread off to the east as we go through the afternoon. As we get into tonight, low pressure is going to gradually creep northward, uh, really not changing much in its intensity or its track. Slowly working toward Kodiak with a frontal boundary there will likely increase your easterly winds ahead of it and probably bring you some rain. High pressure ridge is still in charge of southeast weather and that dry weather extends all the way to Prince William Sound, Kenai Peninsula and parts of southwest. Look for generally clear sky tonight except for the fog and for the areas of smoke that develop uh, in in that area there. Across the eastern interior, look for VFR flying. If you're flying late tonight, uh, it'll still be sunny for most areas, especially up north. Showers, of course, across the middle Yukon Valley and out toward the uh, Yukon Delta. Watch for areas of fog around St. Lawrence Island, all the way down toward that high pressure ridge centered up across the central Aleutians for tonight. For tomorrow, there's our cold front. You can see that gradually approaching the northwestern coast. Probably won't have any major impact on Friday, but you're going to start to see the winds coming up just a little bit more. A few showers and thunderstorms may pop up across the Brooks Range tomorrow. Would not be surprised to see a little bit more activity across the Alaska Range and across the southern parts of the interior. Showers down around the Talkeetna Range, but it looks like dry weather will continue around parts of the Cook Inlet area, Prince William Sound, all the way into southeast as low pressure is gradually working its way northward there. Uh, that front will make its way over Kodiak and heading out towards Seward and Homer, but probably not make it all the way into southeast. You'll see clouds picking up across parts of the outer coast and out across the west that frontal boundary will work its way across the central and western chain eventually by Friday night. As we get into Saturday you can see that low pressure trough still hanging out across the Alaska range. Showers and thunderstorms will form in the afternoon along that boundary and now our cold front works its way across the Arctic coast and will hang up around the Brooks Range summits or maybe just to the south. With that we're going to get into more of a north and easterly flow coming out of uh, the Arctic over the Beaufort Sea coast. And when that happens, we might get a little bit of movement in the ice there. Not expecting a whole lot of big changes there because of that wind won't be that strong or that long lived actually. But it does look like it will be enough to slosh in some cool wet air against the hills of the Brooks Range. You'll get more clouds and then you'll get some more light rain showers as a result of that. Low pressure out across the west, holding at 999 millibars. They're running into a ridge of high pressure across the eastern chain. That front will gradually creep into the central chain with a southerly wind. Winds behind it probably a little bit uh, higher than small craft, maybe some minimum gales. Low pressure sitting across the northern Gulf will slosh more rain and clouds into southeast and Prince William Sound and drag some drier air across the uh, Alaska Range and probably the Kenai Peninsula. Again, so we'll 
be watching the fire situation carefully with that. Let's take a look at temperatures as we get into Friday morning. Look for lows in the upper 40s and lower 50s for southeast. A mild night in Prince William Sound and the Cook Inlet region. 40s and 50s for you. 47 around Kodiak. About 50 for the Bristol Bay communities there. King Salmon and Dillingham included. About 50 or so around Bethel. As you go upriver even more to McGrath, temps will stay in the mid-50s overnight. The middle Tananaw Valley may hold around the 60-degree mark. 40s for the north slope. Utkiavik only 38. A little bit cooler there. Kotzebue 59 and about the same upriver down toward uh, uh, Ambler. Uh, high temperatures for your Friday, upper 70s to low 80s for many interior locations. 82 in Eagle, about the same there in Northway. Uh, lower 80s at least in the middle Tanana Valley around Fairbanks, North Pole, China. Uh, looks like fairly mild conditions for you. 74 in McGrath. Galena, you're looking at 75. Southeast, look for temps in the lower to mid 60s at least. Southern Southeast could be pushing the 70 degree mark. Mid 50s for Kodiak. Clouds for the Alaska Peninsula holding on to mid 50s there in Sand Lake. 51, or Sand Point, I should say. 51 in St. Paul. 54 for McCoryuk and 47 for Gamble in Savunga. Overnight low temperatures, you're not going to see a big change in the interior. The sun is beating down there with temps in the upper 50s and lower 60s. Fort Yukon about 60 degrees. 48 in Nome. Oh, looks like uh, Minnie and Wainwright will only cool off to 36, 33 in Utkiavik, southeast. Temps in the 40s and 50s for you. Cordova about 47. Looking for a high of 61 tomorrow and 81 on Saturday in Fairbanks. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. And on your aviation maps for Friday morning, watch for widespread IFR from the Bering Strait all the way down through the Pribilovs and west through the Aleutian chain. Uh, as of this morning, we were still watching a lot of fog around Savunga there. You can see that on the FAA webcams. And then as you move up toward Kodiak Island and certainly northern and central parts of the Gulf, we do expect to see IFR to start your Friday morning there and hovering right along the outer coast of southeast. Though most areas right along the coast will probably be looking at MVFR lurking and sloshing into some of the inside passages there, but it shouldn't be all encompassing in the region, so that's good news. And around Prince William Sound, watch for IFR inside of uh, Hitchinbrook entrance, but then watch for more MVFR right up along the coast, including Kenai Fjords and past the Barren Islands. Cook Inlet, by and large, should be okay, as well as, obviously, most of the interior. Look at that. VFR conditions there with MVFR just grazing past Utkiavik and Point Barrow, uh, and then uh, heading eastward, slowly creeping toward uh, Prudhoe Bay and Dead Horse as we get into the afternoon. Still looks like most areas are going to be VFR. We are going to see some areas of smoke, it looks like, just kind of lurking around South Central and also over the Seward Peninsula. So keep watch on that and watch for any further restrictions from the FAA. IFR conditions around St. Lawrence Island down toward St. Matthew and the Pribloms. That will continue out across the chain as usual. And the IFR is going to expand just a little bit across the coast. Uh, but watch for mainly MVFR right along your coastal villages there, all the way down through Kenai Fjords, and then IFR right across Kodiak Island, which no big change there around Cook Inlet at all. Saturday morning, MVFR creeps back into southeast. IFR conditions across most of the northern and western Gulf look for a little bit of improvement, perhaps around Kodiak Island. Marginal conditions continue around Prince William Sound. IFR creeps in toward the Yukon Delta and again uh, thickens up a little bit more around the Chukchi Coast and spreads eastward of Utkiavik. No big change out in the west. And by Saturday afternoon, VFR continues for most of the interior. Widely scattered shower and thunderstorm activity still possible. Marginal conditions continue around the Chukchi and Beaufort Sea Coast. IFR through the Bering Strait it peels away just a little bit from the southwestern coast, still lingering right on top of the Yukon Delta. And then IFR peels back across the central and western chain, revealing marginal conditions generally south of the Pribilovs through the eastern chain and into the Alaska Peninsula, with VFR developing around Kodiak Island all the way up into Cook Inlet, Kenai Fjords. And then IFR conditions across uh, places like Glacier Bay, Skagway, uh, Haines, all the way down. Uh, into the capital city with marginal conditions lingering across central and southern parts of the panhandle. A lot going on there, but your past conditions tomorrow look pretty good. Tomorrow, of course, the solstice, we're happy about that. Anaktuvik Pass and Adigan Pass, visual flight rule continue for your Friday there. Looks pretty good for Lake Clark and Merrill Pass. As you move eastward, a better chance of convection as we go through the day. Rainy Pass, Windy Pass, and also Isabel Pass, all looking at the opportunity for bubbling clouds by the afternoon. So watch for that. VFR flight rules should continue, though, for Tanita Pass. And also for Portage Pass, we expect to see marginal to start, but a VFR finish there as conditions improve quickly into the afternoon. Chilkoot and White Pass 
Friday looks like a wonderful day for flying in southeast. Here's a look at the freezing levels, and uh, it doesn't uh, take a meteorologist to tell you it's warm out there, and the freezing levels are way high up there, anywhere from 8 to about 10,000 feet across the mainland, across southeast. Uh, the contour lines are spread out here, and that means there's not a whole lot of change from one location to the other. A little bit of cooling as you move offshore from the west coast of the Seward Peninsula over Norton Sound, and then a little more warming as you head out west across the chain. Uh, no big change from southeast to south central to the interior there that will uh, greatly affect your travel as it looks right now. Icing potential is also way up there. You're going to have to climb up above 10,000 feet, and the air is generally dry. You've noticed a lot of sunshine. There's certainly a reason for that. Uh, widely scattered shower and thunderstorm activity may develop again tomorrow from northwest through the interior and into the Copper River Valley, uh, but by and large, it uh, doesn't look to be as widespread as it has been in recent days. Here's a look at the jet stream. The main path of storm activity is coming off of eastern Russia and Asia and into the Gulf and then bypassing most of Alaska. So you can see uh, this low pressure system here kind of shunting off over the uh, northern parts of Alaska. Uh, it's allowing heat to build in and just remain untouched right now across the region. Uh, at 9,000 feet, a light south and easterly flow coming in with high pressure across the eastern interior, light winds from the north over southeast, and high pressure sitting out over the Gulf, trapping in a lot of that low stratus there. Weak winds coming down the west coast, northerlies around 10 knots, feeding into low pressure across the western Gulf tomorrow. A south and easterly flow a little bit stronger here at 3,000 feet over southeastern Alaska, 15 to 20 there, and westerly showing up across the north slope around 20 knots, but really that's about it. Most winds are fairly light. As you would expect from that, turbulence is really not much of a factor. There will be a little chop around Kodiak Island and Shelikov Strait, and not across the western chain, generally below 4,000 feet. Vega, Altair, and Deneb, oh my. Hey there, stargazers. I'm James Albury, director of the Kika Silva Plot Planetarium in Gainesville, Florida. And I'm Dean Regas, astronomer for the Cincinnati Observatory. We're here to help you find your way around the sky. This week, we want you to kick back and relax under the stars. Summer officially begins at the end of this week, and those warm evenings are perfect for lying in the grass and looking up. The brightest stars of the season are overhead. There you'll find a triangle of three celestial dazzlers, the stars of the summer triangle named Vega, Altair, and Deneb. So, as summer begins, let's take a closer look. Okay, we have our sky set up for 11 p.m. any night this week facing east. You'll see three bright stars that really stand out. It's a triangle, it's rising in the summer, so I'd call that a summer triangle. Let's focus in on those three stars and fly in for a closer look. No matter if you live in the country or in the heart of a city, you should be able to find these three stars distinctly in the sky. When you connect them with lines, they form a huge triangle over 30 degrees long and 20 degrees high. Remember the easy way to measure degrees in the sky? Your fist at arm's length is about 10 degrees. So, see if your summer triangle is two fists high and three fists long. The brightest star of the three and the one closest to the zenith just after sunset is called Vega. Hmm, do I detect a slight bluish tint to the star? You sure do. Vega is a blue-white giant star, and this tells us its temperature. Blue is hotter than white, which is hotter than yellow. Vega is well over 16,800 degrees Fahrenheit on its surface, much hotter than our 10,000 degree yellow sun. The second brightest star in the triangle, and the one off to the right, is called Altair. Altair is stark white in color with a temperature of 13,400 degrees Fahrenheit. And the faintest of the three over to the left is called Deneb. Deneb is bluish white, not as blue as Vega, but hotter than Altair. It scorches space with a surface temperature of about 14,800 degrees. Each bright star in the summer triangle is part of its own constellation. If I use my imagination, and some help from the Stargazer's graphics department, I can just make them out. Vega is part of the constellation Lyra the Harp. The stars make a tiny parallelogram hanging off Vega. In some pictures of Lyra, there's a bird around the harp, since people also called this a vulture. Altair is the eagle eye of the constellation Aquila the Eagle. If you can't see an eagle in those stars, you're not alone. But at least you now know where the eye is. 
and Deneb is the tail star of the stellar swan, the constellation Cygnus. Okay, that's an easy one to picture with his body and long stretched out beak. Cygnus forms a cross shape and is also called the Northern Cross. Now let's talk distances. Vega is the brightest of the three stars, but is not the closest. That honor goes to Altair, who is only 17 light years away from us. With professional telescopes, we can actually see that Altair is spinning rapidly. It spins so fast that it has squished its shape to resemble a blue-white egg. Vega is the second closest at about 25 light years away. That means the light that you see left Vega 25 years ago. That was back when I had hair. <laughs> and Deneb is not only the farthest of the three, it is perhaps the farthest star you can see with the naked eye. At a whopping 3,000 light years away, we can still see it as a bright star. That means Deneb must be humongous. Here is a side-by-side -side comparison of the three summer triangle stars. Wowzers, Deneb dwarfs the other two. So get outside under the summer stars this week. Enjoy the warm summer nights and look for the summer triangle rising in the east. Vega, Altair, and Deneb shine in the sky as summer begins. So definitely keep looking, looking up. And now, marine weather around Alaska. And time for a sea ice update. You'll notice a little more marginal ice north of Utkiavik and Point Barrow there, all the way down to the Chukchi coast to Point Hope. Generally, uh, sea ice uh, is just lingering around Point Lay all the way up toward Wainwright. A little more marginal conditions there. You see more of the uh, higher concentration ice around some of the shoals. Uh, out across Prudhoe Bay, out toward Utkiavik, a little bit more of the higher concentration ice there. Uh, once again, as we get into the weekend, we probably are going to see a front dropping in across uh, the Chukchi Coast and eventually over the Brooks Range. That's going to eventually give us more of a north and northeasterly flow. Not very strong, but it might help to move some of this around just a little bit there, so be mindful of, of how that uh, could be changing there as we get into Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. For the very latest sea ice conditions, head to weather.gov slash anchorage slash ice for the analysis and forecast discussion. As we look at southeast, look for general light winds in most areas, 10 to 15 knots tops. One exception, of course, would be Lynn Canal, 25 knots and 4-foot seas. Generally, an onshore flow down the outer coast, 10 to 15 knots. You're looking at 4 to 5-foot seas in most areas, 2-foot seas inside of Clarence Strait and Stevens Passage. Things look pretty good there for Friday. For Saturday, look for a little bit more of a south and southeasterly flow, all feeding into low pressure that's working its way across the Gulf, pushing a front closer to the outer coast, and that means more clouds for you as well. Seven to eight foot seas across the outer coast, south winds coming up through Stevens Passage and the Lynn Canal. Two to four foot seas there with 20 knot winds in the Lynn Canal and 15 knot winds across Clarence Strait. Prince William Sound looks pretty good for Friday. Easterlies, 10 knots and two foot seas. Southwesterly winds coming up Cook Inlet, anywhere from about 10 knots and two foot seas there. A little bit more of a northeasterly flow out around the western barrens. Easterlies feeding into the eastern barrens, 25 knots there with a six to eight foot sea on Friday. That diminishes a little bit more on Saturday. Winds are going to switch around to more of a westerly flow over the barrens. Look for light easterly winds moving through uh, Prince William Sound and just outside, 10 to 15 knots. Two foot seas on the inside, five foot seas on the outside, and light southwesterlies coming up Cook Inlet there with a two foot sea on a 10 knot wind. In Bristol Bay on Friday, look for southerlies at 15 knots, two foot seas, northwesterlies crossing the peninsula around 15 to 20 knots with four to seven foot seas, the highest of which would be on the Pacific coast side. Northeasterlies are working their way through Shelikov Strait and south and west of Akiak. Look for that wind to wrap around. Low pressure's right about here, so it's going to be strongest in this vicinity here, so watch for seas to come up to around eight feet around Kodiak Island, nine feet actually on the eastern side for Friday as that's wrapping around into that low pressure system. A little bit more of a westerly draw as we get into Saturday. Again, low pressure's working into the uh, central and eastern gulf at this point, so it's going to be dragging a lot of that air through. Look for four foot seas in Chillicothe, five to six foot seas across the uh, eastern Kodiak Island region, and all the way through Bristol Bay, about four to five foot seas there on a 20 knot wind coming in from the west. As you look at the Aleutians, notice that most areas are dealing with about 10 to 15 knot winds there, four to five foot seas for most regions in the Pacific Coast, and two to four foot seas across the 
Bering Sea coast to south and easterly flow across the western chain, four to five foot seas there and 20 to 25 knot winds. Seas are going to come up as well as the wind on Saturday as that next occluded front works its way up through Adak, Atka, Kiska and Shemya. We expect to see those winds around 30 to 35 knots with a south and southeasterly flow. For the central and eastern chain, most of that looks pretty good. 10 to 15 knots tops with 3 to 4 foot seas. You're looking at about 8 to 16 foot seas out here across the west. So watch for some sharp changes on Saturday. Uh, across Norton Sound, northwesterlies, 10 knots and 2 foot seas. St. Matthew dealing with 15 knots from the west. You're looking at about a 5 foot sea there. And St. Paul and St. George, 15 knots, 4 foot seas from the north and west on Friday. A little bit more of a southerly flow and going light on Saturday. Three foot seas expected for you. A gentle onshore push coming into Amana, Cooper Bay, and Macquarie. Ten knots uh, from the west, two to three foot seas, and 15 knots into Norton Sound from the west on your Saturday. Light winds will blow in from the west with more of a variable flow around Kaktovik on Friday. Look for a south and southwesterly flow coming through the Chukchi. Three to four foot seas expected there. As we get into Saturday, there's that front passing, and now you've got north winds coming into the Beaufort Sea Coast, 15 knots, and Two to three foot seas northeasterly is coming down the Chukchi, about 15 to 20 knots expected on Saturday in that region. Here's your forecast then tonight. A recap shows low pressure working through the western gulf. A frontal boundary working its way through Kodiak Island and the Alaska Peninsula. We'll bring more clouds and fog and rainfall through the region with that easterly wind driving into Kodiak Island itself. But ahead of that, conditions should may remain fairly mild and dry, including southeast Prince William Sound, the Kenai Peninsula, and parts of southwest. Watch for showers across the central and western parts of the interior and clouds across the Chukchi coast. A front will arrive closer to the Chukchi coast by Friday afternoon and evening. Out ahead of it, showers and maybe a few thunderstorms, a better chance of that around the Alaska range and northward into the interior. The front's moving northward toward uh, south central and southeast, and as we get ahead into Saturday, you'll notice clouds are filling back into southeast. Showers and thunderstorms north of the Alaska range, colder air dropping south. <laughs> These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating.